When we have a right angled triangle, we can use so, ka and toa to find the sides and the angles. If our triangle is not a right angled triangle, we can't do this and we instead need to use the sine rule or the cosine rule. For both of these rules, the first step is the same. We need to label the triangle. I label the angles, capital A, B and C. Then the side opposite A is little a, this side is little b and this side is little c. There are two forms of the sine rule. This one, which you use when you're finding a side, and this will be given to you on the exam paper. You can easily rearrange this to get this to use when you're finding an angle. Whichever one you use, you will only ever need to use two parts of it. So for example, you could use this and this, this and this, or this and this. You'll never need to use all three. The cosine rule looks like this, which you use when finding a side, and this will be given to you on the exam paper. For finding an angle, you can either rearrange this to get this here, or you can actually memorize this. We have to know when to use the sine rule and when to use the cosine rule. There are four basic situations, which I'm going to explain to you now. But if you can't remember these, don't worry. If you try the wrong one, it just won't work and you'll need to use the other one. The four situations are, if you have two angles and any side, you use the sine rule. If you have two sides and a non-included angle, you use the sine rule. This means that if I had this side here and this side here, I need to have either this angle or this angle, not this one, which is included in between these two sides. If you have two sides and the included angle, you use the cosine rule. For example, if I had this side and this side, I would need to have this angle to be able to use the cosine rule. If you're given all three sides and no angles, you use the cosine rule. To answer this question, the first thing I need to notice is that I'm given two angles and a side. So I must be using the sine rule. I now need to label my sides. Opposite angle A is A. This one here is B and this one is C. Now I've got angle B and side B, so I'm definitely using that part. And I want to find the side AB, which is C, and I've got angle C, so I'm going to use that part. I'm not worrying about this. So I now have C over sine C equals B over sine B. I'm now going to substitute in the values I know from my diagram. So I have C over sine 50, because this angle is 50, equals 8, which is side B, over sine 60. I can now rearrange this to get C on its own. C equals 8 over sine 60, multiplied by sine 50. Typing this into my calculator, gives me the answer 7.08 to three significant figures. And because we're finding a side, it's centimetres. So side AB is 7.08 centimetres. In this question, I'm given two sides and a non-included angle. So I know again that I'm using the sine rule. But this time I'm looking for an angle so I've had to rearrange my sine rule. I'm going to start by labeling the triangle. I'm going to relabel the angles A, B, and C. Then my sides are A, B, and C. I'm looking for the angle X, which is this one here. So I'm definitely using this part of the sine rule. 
and I've got angle B and side B, so I'm also using this part. So I now have sine A over A equal to sine B over B. Substituting, I get sine A over 8.5 equals sine 38 over 7.2. I'm now going to rearrange this to get sine A. Sine A equals sine 38 over 7.2 multiplied by 8.5. Typing this into my calculator gives me that sine A equals 0.72682275. I now need to find A. So I'm going to press shift or inverse sign. A equals 46.6 degrees to three significant figures. And of course, this was actually angle X. So X equals 46.6 degrees. Here's a question for you to try. Press pause and have a go at it. When you're ready for the answer, press play. You should have this answer here. Here's a second question for you to try. Press pause and have a go at it. When you're ready for the answer, press play. The first thing you should have done was realise that we need A and A, so we need this part, and B and B, so we need this part and not this one. You then need to rearrange this to give you this. This is the answer that you should have got. In this question, I'm given two sides and a non-included angle, so I know straight away that it's a sine rule question. However, it's a tricky sine rule question. I've got this angle and this side, and I'm looking for this angle, but I don't have this side here. So what I need to do is use this side to find this angle here. Once I find the size of this angle here, I can then take this and this away from 180 to give me this angle. I'm going to leave this for you to do. Press pause and have a go at it. When you're ready for the answer, press play. Here's the answer. I found this angle here to be this, and then I've taken 98 and the angle I've just found away from 180 to give me this answer here. I've rounded it off to three significant figures. The next part of this clip is about the cosine rule. Here's a reminder of it. Remember, you use the cosine rule when you're given two sides and an included angle or all three sides. In this question, I'm given two sides and the included angle, so I'm going to be using the cosine rule. On the exam paper, the cosine rule will be given to you in this form. So I'm going to show you a trick to do this question. The side I'm looking for is AC. Because the cosine rule is in this form, A squared equals something, the side I'm finding needs to be A. I'm now going to change the other letters on the triangle. So this one is now big A. This one has to be big B, so this one is B. And this is C, this is C. I'm going to start with my formula. A squared equals B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cos A. I now have a squared equals b squared, 27.3 squared, plus c squared, 10.7 squared, minus 2 times b times c times cos a. Typing this into my calculator gives me that a squared equals 
505 3236. To find A, I now need to square root. The answer I get is 24.2 to three significant figures. This was the side AC, so AC equals 24.2 centimetres. In this question, I'm given three sides, so I know that I'm using the cosine rule. I'm being asked to find an angle, so I need to rearrange the formula they give me on the exam paper to get this. Cos A equals B squared plus C squared minus A squared over 2BC. I now need to change the letters on my triangle. The angle I'm trying to find, P, needs to be A. When we come to do B and C, it actually doesn't matter which one's B and which one's C. This side is now A, this is B, and this is C. So I now have cos A equals B squared, which is 6.7 squared, plus C squared, 4.2 squared, minus A squared, 5.4 squared, over 2 times 6.7 times 4.2. Typing this into my calculator gives me the answer 0.59292816. Don't forget that when you type this into your calculator, what you need to do is put the top in brackets, press divide and put the bottom in brackets. That will give you this answer. Now to find A, I just need to press shift cos and I get 53.6 degrees to three significant figures. Remember, we were actually asked to find P. So this is P, 53.6 degrees. Here's a question for you to try. Press pause and have a go at it. When you're ready for the answer, press play. Here's the answer you should have got. Here's a second question for you to try. Press pause and have a go at it. When you're ready for the answer, press play. The first thing we needed to do was rearrange this formula to give this. This is the answer that you should have got. Here's a mixture of sine rule and cosine rule questions for you to try. Press pause and have a go at them. When you're ready for the answers, press play. Here are the answers. In this question here, I hope you realised that you had to use the fact that the angles in a triangle add up to 180 to find this angle here first of all. In this question, you needed to use the sine rule to find this angle and then take these two angles away from 180 to give this answer.